This problem is a great way of showing that physics equations are consistent with one another. So uh, first, let's go ahead and I'll show you why that is in just a bit. First, let's go ahead and recognize that it's an infinitely, or let's just say it's an infinitely long line of charge. And uh, we're analyzing the E field at some point um, away from this line and very far away from the end. So there's no fringe effects here. This is great because now we're seeing that this is a symmetrical problem. The E field goes always perpendicular to this here Gaussian shape. And it does not depend on the area that, or the particular part of the area in this Gaussian shape. So we start off with the Gaussian equation right here, the enclosed integral of E dot DA, both vectors, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Again, we're gonna uh, invoke the fact that this problem is symmetrical. Uh, e will always be parallel to the area vector of the Gaussian shape and it does not depend on the particular part of the area within that shape. So E will always remain constant at all points of the area. So therefore this integral now becomes simply an algebraic problem, EA. And that's gonna to equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Let's go ahead and isolate E. and put A down on the denominator of the right side of the equation. So we're not given Q, but we are given a lambda. So therefore we can say that the Q enclosed is equal to, and we're gonna use the uh, charge density equation. Q enclosed is just gonna be lambda multiplied by the length of, of this Gaussian curve that we drew here. And of course this is a, an arbitrary Gaussian curve. So this L that we're gonna, invoke here for, for Q is not gonna remain in the final equation for E. We're, to, we're gonna have to get rid of it eventually. So Q is lambda L, and we're gonna divide it by epsilon naught. Now the surface area is only gonna be the area in which E penetrates parallel to. Uh, since it's an infinite line, there is no E field going right or left, right? So that's, that's just completely uh, incorrect. So therefore, the two circular sides of this Gaussian curve, even though it's an enclosed curve, are not experiencing any E-field penetration. It's only the top, bottom, and front and backs, okay? Just the cylinder uh, body part. So therefore, the area is going to be um, 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle, multiplied the, by the length right there. Okay, so convince yourself that that's the area right there. It's gonna be two pi r times the length of this arbitrary cylinder that we've drew here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make it big R just to be consistent with uh, what the problems picture shows. So let's go ahead and cancel out what's not necessary. And luckily for us, the L's cancel out. So this ends up being lambda over two pi epsilon naught times r. And that's gonna be our final answer. This is a relatively short little problem. Now the reason why it's consistent uh, with other physics equations is because we already have a similar equation for um, the E field near an infinite line charge. Now if you remember back in the lecture, the E field near an infinite line charge is one over four pi epsilon naught times two lambda, absolute value of lambda, so whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter, divided by R, which is the distance from that line charge. So you can see that this actually equals to this if you replace R with big R and you just assume that lambda is positive, then this ends up being lambda over two pi epsilon naught r. And so Gauss's law actually proves the equation that we saw earlier for an infinite line charge uh, with respect to analyzing the E field.